Let me start off this video by saying this was not the video I intended to make for this week. I was intending to make another fun installment of my Super Mario RPG Let's Play, but I faltered. And that's all thanks to the number trap. If you're thinking, Akemi, what do you even mean by that? I'll sum up. Have you ever created, shared, produced an artwork, video, tweet, Instagram reel, Reddit post, whatever it may be, and only a short while after you've put it out there, the numbers don't meet your expectations? Well, take a moment to think about how that makes you feel. Yeah. For the most part, it sucks. Whatever the varying degrees of suckage, I think we can all agree. It hurts in some way. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the whole idea of don't focus on the numbers, which is unmistakably true. But that alone isn't what this video is about. To me, by answering this issue with don't focus on the numbers, we fail to recognize that we are bound to do this not just once, but possibly a few times in our lives. We just can't help but notice the numbers every now and then. Before I dive in, allow me to clarify that this self-acclaimed number trap I am speaking merely for the creative process when it comes to creating content, art, blogs, videos, memes, something we share on social media, and then what we expected to have, whether that be appropriate views, likes, comments, retweets, upvotes, hearts, whatever it is, isn't what our work has garnered. It can make our thoughts spiral. We can doubt our abilities. The foundation of our self-esteem and confidence can be shaken. And going through a similar process this past week alone, I felt I needed to share my experience. Share not just what happened to me, but discuss more importantly what I did about it. The number trap to me is like a pitfall. And I just love my metaphors, so imagine it's a pitfall. It's unexpected. Imagine going about your everyday life, having a nice metaphorical or actual walk in the park, and all of that is interrupted as the ground beneath you gives way, and then poof, stuck. When you focus on the numbers, you have subconsciously or consciously put yourself into that hole, that pitfall, it's a trap, and you've fallen for it. This is exactly what happened to me last weekend. In one of my more recent uploads, I was tripped up by some of their output in numbers. And no lie, it stung. I fell down that hole. A pitfall where it seems like the walls are higher up than you can climb, sometimes out of reach. And naturally, what does one do when they usually fall into an unexpected pitfall? I can guarantee that most of the time, it's to panic. Your actions range from screaming, help, 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 to frantically clawing at the earthen sides, desperately trying to pull and lift yourself out, sometimes making a little headway, then coming crashing to the cold dirt floor. It grunges up your hands. You're left with bruises, cuts, and scrapes that aren't, well, mortally inflicting. But damn, do they still sting. I will admit that I have done such a thing. I've panicked and in the end, the only thing that was accomplished by doing that was hurting myself more. And for what? Why must I have this practical human need that seeks validation from complete strangers? Damn my nature. Ah, uh, but what good will cursing and berating myself do? This pitfall has happened numerous times on separate occasions. So why does it feel like in some instances the drop feels a little harder than others? Take this picture I'm drawing on screen right now. This is a picture of my Pokemon character Mizu and granted this video won't show all of my process as I'll be dividing that up between speed draws. But when I was finished, I posted it on Twitter feeling absolutely proud of this work I had just completed only to have a few interactions. This made me realize that, in this instance, I truly practiced not to focus on the numbers and genuinely just felt happy just to share. 
I didn't let my thoughts run away with how much or how little interaction I was given. Yet, when it comes to my uploads, I was hit harder. How come the pitfall felt like a longer way down? I carried the same attitude like I did drawing. I created something I was proud of, something I thoroughly enjoyed. But it seems like I fell flat on my face. Well, that's because unlike my art, where I've had years of experience to the point where I'm confident in, an, in it enough that my foundation won't be shaken quite so easily. But my uploads, currently being a content creator, I'm going on like two years now, there's a lot more room for doubt. So there I was, down this number trap pitfall once again, walls high above my head, seemingly impossible to grasp, let alone climb out of. Yet, unlike all the other times where I have been known to panic, I did something different. Something I have been trying my hardest to work on so I can personally level up. That way, this can affect me less and less as time goes on. And it may sound silly to some, but honestly, it does wonders. Self-talk. Now, if you're not one who likes to talk or let alone talk to yourself, then self-write. Journal out your thoughts. Start asking some basic questions, which is exactly what I did starting with, all right, why are we down here, Akemi? My answer, I don't feel like my latest video performed really well. Okay, so why do you feel that way? What makes you feel that it didn't perform as well? The views alone weren't up there like my other videos. You've produced videos with similar ratios and views, others even less. Why does it affect you this time around much more? Well, I put a lot of time and effort into it. I was really proud and excited to share it, yet after doing so, it just felt like it flopped. Well, aren't you still excited and proud to have created it? Well, yes. Don't you still like it? Yes. Did you enjoy making it? Well, yeah. So if you like it, you're still proud of it, why should these numbers make it worth any less? What is this video's worth to you? From there, I had to take a moment to think on that hardball question, sort out and organize my thoughts and feelings. Now, could I have put my nose to the grindstone and cranked out another gaming video? Yeah. But deep down, my passion wouldn't translate. It's so strange how other people's interpretation of our worth, whether it be in ourselves or something we create, has such a stranglehold on us. Instead of seeking validation from others, I feel we need to practice our intrinsic value. But when we keep falling for the pitfalls like the number trap, it becomes exceedingly difficult to maintain. Now, I've also heard of the adage of numbers don't lie which seems counterintuitive of don't focus on the numbers. I think we need to change that saying. Reframe it so by breaking it down, it becomes something much more easily understood than being vague and confusing. Instead of saying numbers don't lie, maybe we need to start asking what do they prove and add on to that. What do these numbers directly prove to me? With this question, let's try to keep a more positive mindset. Second, what do these numbers indirectly prove to me? Now with this question, you can write down all your anxious thoughts or beliefs on these numbers, something you just have a hunch about. Then ask yourself, what do these numbers make me feel and why? With this last one, try to be a bit of a devil's advocate, especially if you're going in with a negative mindset and refute that with positives. Let's use an example and I wanna start small. If one art piece has 10 likes and the other has 100, both created by you because we're not about to compare ourselves to others and fall into a different kind of trap, what does that directly prove? When I'm saying directly, I mean the very simple cut and dry version, surface level meaning, which in this case, 10 people liked one and 100 liked the other. That said, can we agree that both pieces were enjoyed? Well, clearly, as the numbers showed, they both had likes, regardless of the quantity. Maybe some people of the first one liked the second one too. 
if they're already your followers, watchers, subscribers, etc., isn't that showing you their support? It's even possible that maybe these individuals are potential soon to be supporters of your content and creations. Also, include yourself as well. Did you like your latest post, creation, video, etc.? To be honest, I do this all the time across all of my socials. I don't believe we should feel ashamed for showing self-support. In my eyes, it's a form of self-love and we're patting ourselves on the back. There's nothing wrong with being proud of what you bring to this world for others to enjoy. Yet, as we tend to do, we seek further interpretation. This is where the second question comes in. For this exercise to work its best, do not berate yourself. Try to put down possible facts and not just opinions. So what do these numbers indirectly prove? Maybe you're wondering why the gap is so large. Maybe the content of the second piece grabs more. Indirectly, maybe it proves the audience likes more B content over A. Indirectly, maybe my first piece just didn't hit that algorithm sweet spot and thus less likes. Indirectly, maybe I could have mislabeled appropriate tags to help more people see it or possibly didn't promote myself enough. Indirectly, maybe it was just a slow day on this platform via time of sharing and didn't catch any of the interwebs traffic. Finally, this leads to my last question of what do these numbers make me feel? This is where you can let it all out. Let out all your frustration, joy, whatever you feel is bottled up and go off. I remember having thoughts of, oh, I suck so my video sucks that these numbers make me feel like crap. After venting mentally, verbally, or in written form, whichever you prefer, I personally was doing it verbally and mentally. I then went back and thought over the first two of what do these numbers prove directly and indirectly. After calming down, I revisited how I felt, then started refuting those negative thoughts and feelings. If you're writing, pick a pen of your favorite color and just start picking yourself back up. Compliment yourself. Show yourself some kindness. For me, next to my, oh, I suck so my video sucks remark, I told myself, you don't really suck. You are growing. And that is justifiable, just like your feelings. So long as you continue to grow, the numbers will too. By the time I had mentally gone through the motions like this, allowing myself to calm down those enormous walls around me, remember our little pitfall trap from earlier where we felt like we were just stuck in? Well, those walls quickly shrank to ankle height. I was able to easily step out of the pitfall and go on about my business. Yes, the numbers will trip you up every now and then, but we retain the capacity to raise and lower the walls depending on how we tackle the situation. Granted, this might not work for everyone. So please, please be sure to tell me when you found yourself in a similar situation, what did you do? What worked? But also include, if you can, what you discovered didn't work. I'd love to read them. Please put them in the comments below. The value of our work shouldn't amount to how many views, likes, comments, any of that brings. Yeah, I will concede to the fact that there are ways to market ourselves better, especially if you're an entrepreneur and are looking to grow your business, your brand, product, art, whatever it may be. However, that's an entirely different topic that I would only be able to scrape the surface on. For that kind of advice, I highly recommend Vanessa Lau as she is a fantastic individual who can give you tips and tricks on how to grow across different social media platforms. So when it comes to the number trap, it has the tendency to zap your focus. It becomes a vicious cycle where you can become so high strung of dishing out content only to retain the same amount of attention that you've had in previous posts. Going down this consistent look at numbers, become crestfallen, push out more content, you'll start burning the candle at both ends and it honestly won't be long until you reach burnout. I also wanna briefly talk about going viral. Now this has happened to me. Somewhere in my earlier career of YouTube, I felt that if one video, just one, hit that algorithm sweet spot, 
Somebody famous saw it and shared something somewhere with somebody gave me the quote chance I need, then BAM! From there, I'd be self-made. Won't deny I've often fantasized about that possible moment, but by doing so, I failed to realize that by daydreaming of said moment, I lost sight of what needs to be done. Going viral to me feels a lot like a modern day Cinderella story. The idea of some outside source able to bring you up and whisk you away to fortune, happiness, and well, yeah, possibly fame. Yet we tend to forget about the meat of that fairy tale. We easily overlook how hard Cinderella worked, how she chose kindness despite being beaten down and berated, how she hurt but still pressed on. Then opportunity coming in the form of her fairy godmother presented itself and she took it. That to me is what the going viral fantasy does. It fails to recognize that you still need to do the work. You need to apply yourself, learn from your mistakes, keep moving forward and creating content, art, projects that you love and are passionate about. Focus on quality, not quantity. That's another thing that the going viral trap does. I've listened to stories from different YouTubers and podcasters that they've seen so many others make the rookie mistake of having something go viral and then constantly trying to replicate that very same video or artwork in different contexts. What this does is push quantity over quality. And think about it like you owned a toy store. One day, say for whatever reason, truly unbeknownst to you, this rabbit plush you made is the bee's nails. Everybody in the whole town has to have one. So they come to your shop for this rabbit plush and it gets you thinking, wow, this toy rabbit is what's making me money. I should do variations of this toy. So instead of focusing on the variety of animal stuffies in your store, you start mass producing different iterations of that same rabbit plush. Pink ones, purple, blue, polka dots too. Well, at some point, the masses are going to move on and you're gonna sit there wondering why your business is just doing worse and worse now. Little did you realize that by going down this route, you pigeonholed yourself. Sometimes it just takes that one person to walk into your toy store and ask, you got anything else other than rabbit stuffies? It'll make you pause and realize, oh, I was so caught up in the latest sensation, that viral hit, that I forgot I should have stuck to my guns and kept producing more awesome things that I was passionate about, not just pandering to what I believed the people wanted. There's a little something that someone told my sister at a convention that stuck with me. He said, you don't get to decide what your magnum opus is. Your audience does. Likewise, we don't get to decide what we do will go viral or not. The audience will. With that, we need to reframe what it means to go viral. To me, instead of labeling going viral as one of the ultimate forms of success, I think of it now as a way to bring in an influx of potentially new supporters to my platform. A way to reach a broader audience and say, hey, thanks for coming, take a look around. Granted, not everyone is going to stay. Some will hop in for just that one thing and then hop out. And there'll always be those people who will scoff at you being like, nobody cares about any of this other crap you do. I only came for this. So if you meet those people, don't let them diminish your fire. Hold fast and don't take it personally. While you have the spotlight on you, make the most of it by sharing your passion. Definitely have to be your best self-advocate here. More attention also means more trolls, and if there's anything I've ever learned about the internet is to not feed the trolls. To sum up, going viral is an opportunity to grow, not a definite form of success. Don't fall for the trap, guys. I will unashamedly say that I have daydreamed about my quote, lucky break, as well as getting tripped up by the numbers. Tell me in the comments below if you've fallen for these number traps. The one with little to no interaction and the other just a massive sudden influx that could very well overwhelm you. 
Give this video a like to let me know that you enjoyed it, and also subscribe so you never miss a beat on this girl's content. So remember everybody, be awesome, be you. Akemi, out.